All right, lesson number four. Here's a quick little rundown on the Philippines, some basic information for you. All right, so the original people are not exactly the people that live there today. In the Philippines, the original people were called the Negritos, and they were there a really long time ago. Today's Filipinos, they were from a, a different migration into the Philippines. Some people would leave Taiwan about 6,000 years ago, and they would conquer the Philippines. There'd be some intermarriage, and the people of the Philippines today are the result of that. Uh, the Philippines people that came out of Taiwan, some of them will stay in the Philippines, others will keep going, and they're going to spread out over the rest of Oceania. And you'll be looking at Micronesia here pretty soon, as well as Melanesia and Indonesia and Polynesia here pretty quick. All right, so one thing that's kind of weird is we know the exact day that the Philippine people left prehistory. Prehistory is that time a uh, long, long time ago before people started writing down history. In the Philippines, we actually have the exact date they started writing down history. It's this rock right down here, if you look. That is the first writing from the Philippines. It's from uh, a little over a thousand years ago. So I thought that was kind of cool. All right, so let's talk about the people who lived in the Philippines. They were they developed into four very different groups, and they didn't exactly get along all the time. But no one really conquered each of the others completely. So one of the groups was hunter gatherers. Think like American Indians in the United States. Another group were warriors, not quite to the extent of, say, Sparta, but still. Another group is ocean-faring. What that means is they traveled around the ocean, went to other places. And the last one, this is a word you've probably never heard before. It's called plutocracies. These are a type of government where the richest people are the ones who are in charge. So it's, it's not exactly democracy, because not everyone gets to vote. But the rich people all get together and decide things. So like, I don't know, uh, Bill Gates and Oprah and uh, LeBron James, they all get together and make decisions about the country instead of having Congress. It'd be kind of like that. So you got a question coming up. Who do you think was more important out of these four groups? All right, the answer was ocean faring. Here's why. These people left the Philippines to go and trade. So they had contact with China, Japan, Thailand, India, Vietnam, other parts of Indonesia. And when they went to these places, they discovered new technology new ideas, religion, um, Bronze Age, Iron Age, all, you know, all that stuff, and they brought it back to the Philippines. This will be the only island in all of Oceania that's not in the Stone Age. The only island. And they bring not just swords and, and stuff, they also bring Hinduism and Buddhism and all this other stuff before white people arrive to the Philippines. So that's what makes them so important. All right, uh, some, some things to know about the Philippines. Uh, you'll, you'll study some of this next year. The Philippines has had a very, it's um, a nice way to say it, a very rocky history. So in, in the 1500s, some Spanish people were going around and saying, Ooh, look, I discovered an island full of people. This now belongs to Spain. And just kind of taking all these islands and making them part of Spain. Just conquering these people. And Magellan, the famous guy who was going around the world, lands in the Philippines and says this belongs to Spain now. Then the United States is going to go to war with Spain. The United States wins the war. And boom, now the Philippines belong to the United States. Then during World War II, Japan conquers the Philippines and takes it from the United States. 
Then, at the end of World War II, the United States goes back in, takes the Philippines back, and now it belongs to the United States again. Then, right after World War II, the Philippines people start fighting the Americans for freedom. And there's a little itty-bitty war fought there. And America finally decides, you know what? We're out. And the Philippines people are able to earn their, their in independence. Now the Philippines is a lot like Mexico. There are some places which are not so good to go to, especially if you're, you know, a tourist. It's not that these places aren't necessarily, you know, beautiful or historic. It's just they're not always the safest. Uh, but there's a lot of great places to go for tourism and things like that. So, like Mexico. All right, so some basic rundown. The Philippines, it's not one island. It's not a couple of little islands. It's not even, a, it's over 7,000 islands. There's actually a word for this. A bunch of islands together making up one place. It's called an archipelago or archipelago. <coughs> because it's all these islands together, it's going to have the fifth largest coastline. That means lots of beaches. Great place to go if you want to go on the beach. They've got mountains and rainforest. They're in the ring of fire, which, as you know, means earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff like that. They have a ridiculous amount of natural resources. Minerals, uh, gold, nickel, copper, zinc, uh, all sorts of stuff. Even this thing called geothermal energy, which you should have learned about in science. It's so when you take the heat from Earth, things from like volcanoes and stuff like that, and use it to make electricity. I haven't checked recently, but last time I looked, 20% of the Philippines' energy came from geothermal energy. That's pretty cool. There are some islands in the ocean today that get 100% of their electricity from geothermal stuff. That's awesome. All right, so uh, lots of land, lots of islands, and lots of different animals. The, some of the most diverse, uh, different you know, different types of animals and plants, most diverse land on the planet. It's in the top ten of all countries. No big predators, so you don't have to worry about lions or wolves or anything big like that attacking you. Although they do have snakes. If you want to study animals in the ocean, this is a great place to go to. There's over 2,400 different kinds of fish just by the beaches. There's over 13,000 plants on these islands, some of which exist only there and nowhere else in the world. It's a tropical climate, which means very warm, very humid. Minnesota, we got four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, fall. They have three seasons. The dry season, which is kind of like a Minnesota summer, the rainy season, and the monsoon season, the hurricane season. All right, so some random stuff. Oh, look at that handsome guy right there. Two of the world's biggest shopping malls are in the Philippines. There are people who will fly from other Asian countries into the Philippines to go shopping for the day or the weekend. Lots of tourism. Lots of popular sports, basically the same as us here in the United States, except not as big into football. Really popular is UFC, Ultimate Fighting, you know, where the, the two people get together in the cage and they, they fight until someone's unconscious or taps out. Big into wrestling, basketball. Lots of people there. The islands are split into three main groups, three different types of Filipino people. So there's no longer those four, now it's three. That's a great place to study volcanoes. If you want to study volcanoes, there's one there that has erupted once every five point whatever years. Which means it's a great place to study active volcanoes. You can go and actually watch it erupt. Although I uh, don't know that I would want to do that. Alright, that's your Philippines PowerPoint.